Hey guys, this episode we're gonna be talking about how to use some of the new data attributes in Turbo now that Rails 7 ships with Hotwire by default. So I wanna point out a couple things here. We have a link to and a button to as two examples of submitting a delete request to delete some resource. So if we click these, it uses Rails UJS and it creates the confirm modal. And if we click that, it makes a form and actually submits that form as a delete request when we have that as a link. If we have a form as a button to with Rails UJS, it's going to actually generate a form right there with the button inside of it and put the data confirm on the button itself and submit that. So when we convert these to the turbo versions, so we'll say turbo here, we'll have to um, basically remove the data method um, or the method is delete on the link to. And we want to put that inside of here and say turbo method is delete and turbo confirm is are you sure? So this is going to basically namespace the turbo versions of this away from Rails UJS, which still ships with Rails, but it's likely to get deprecated and removed in the future once a lot of the other things are sorted out with turbo itself. The basics are all there, like turbo method and turbo confirm, but these are also a little bit different. So let's take a look at this. When we destroy a link with Rails UJS, um, it's going to destroy the record. But if we go to edit and we use the turbo destroy button here, what's gonna happen is it's gonna destroy the record and then give us this weird error page, active record, record not found. And the reason for that is our request made a delete to the record and then it returned a redirect 302 to slash posts. And the 302 status actually is going to per, like persist that method of delete and then it's gonna to try to delete at slash posts. So the 302 return status or redirect status in our controller is actually something we cannot use here. So the default for our redirect to in the destroy is going to be a 302. Now the 302 says the target resource resides temporarily under a different URI, which means send that delete request to this new URI. What we really want is a see other status. And this says the server's redirecting the user agent to a different resource um, as indicated by the URI, which is intended to provide an indirect response to the original request. So it doesn't mean we have to send the delete, we want to actually change that to a get. So if we change this to uh, status, see other or 303, this is now going to submit a delete request and then take that redirect and do a get request for it. So if we look at our Rails logs, we'll see that we did the delete and then we get the get like we were used to and what we expected. So the fetch requests that are done by Turbo are going to strictly follow the HTTP status codes. So when you send a 302, it's going to be treated like a 302, and that's slightly different from a 303. So you'll notice little things like this where we need to go and update our um, controllers and so on to properly match the HTTP status codes in some cases. So if you're upgrading a Rails application, things like this will probably catch you off guard and you'll have to just double check and make sure that you have done everything um, correctly because the fetch requests are going to strictly adhere to those statuses. So that is the destroy link and our destroy button does not actually need the redirect there because it's submitting a form and that will properly make the delete request and then follow with a get. So this button two, we want the method delete still to be on the form, but our data confirm needs to, instead of being on the button, um, this needs to be on the form uh, option. So this will make sure that the data confirm gets applied to the form element. Method delete is a special one that automatically gets put on the form. So if we save this, we can go to a post, we can edit, we can inspect this, and we will see that the form has data confirm, are you sure? And the button does not. And of course on this one as well, we want this to be turbo confirm. 
So we'll refresh, we'll see that this says data turbo confirm, and if we click OK, it will delete and redirect to the root. So this works great, um, and those are basically the equivalents that you'll want to use for the turbo JavaScript. Um, you can still use the Rails UJS ones. That JavaScript is all still in the Rails repository, and you can read through that. Um, if you ever want to take a look at the JavaScript for this, it's under Action View, App Assets, JavaScripts, RailsUJS.coffee, and this defines the selectors for the different elements. And under the Start.coffee, you can see where it sets up all of the event listeners. So clicks for the buttons and links, the input changes, the form submit selectors, and the uh, form input click selectors, and so on. Those are all defined here. It tells you which methods it's going to call um, on those events, and those are imported from the other JavaScript files here, which you can find under Features. So the Confirm JavaScript is implemented right here. Um, it's actually super simple. Basically just calls the Confirm Browser dialog, but you can override some of this stuff. And then the method is actually the one uh, that does the data method attribute. It creates a new form, and then it appends it to the body, and then it submits that form, um, and that's how that works. So when you have these links that you uh, see right here on edit, these links, the destroys with the underscore, um, those are actually clicking it, creating a form, submitting that form, and it's doing basically the same thing this button does. The problem with these buttons can be that if you wanted a button for destroy right next to update post, you can't put a form within a form in HTML, it's not valid, so you'd have to use the links for those cases. So that's why it's kind of um, still allowed for this situation because that is the only way to pull off a link inside of a form. You can't have those, and then it gets tricky to try and put it there with CSS, so the um, the turbo method and data method is pretty important for that. Now the remote um, is true data remote uh, attributes. Those are not really needed anymore because turbo is going to submit all of your forms with fetch requests and all of your link clicks with fetch requests. So that is not something you really need to worry about anymore. So if we go and inspect in our network tab, we can go and destroy this record and we'll see that this was uh, type fetch and redirect. Uh, we got our 303 back, and our request to the homepage was a fetch as well. And the same thing applies if we destroy with the link, we're going to get that delete, which was a 303 response. So all of those are fetch requests, and that means that our data remote stuff isn't really needed anymore, and our js.erb responses can be converted to TurboStream responses instead, or you can move some of that to your um, stimulus controllers as needed. So that is the main things in our Rails um, features here in UJS, but disable.coffee, is the one that defines the disable with um, stuff, but it also dis defines how elements are enabled and disabled on the page. Now, some of this stuff is still being worked on in a turbo, but one of the things that I use all the time is the disable with on a button. So when I click this, I wanna see it go disabled, and then I want to display some other text there. So in this case, We'll go into our uh, form.html.erb, and we can have this disable with processing, but you'll see it didn't get applied. And the way to do this in Turbo is actually to change this from a form to a button, and then add a block here, and we're gonna add two HTML snippets. We're gonna have a, a class of span, or a span class of uh, show when enabled, and we're gonna have one for show when disabled. So this is gonna be our text like create post, and this is gonna be one like processing or submitting or whatever. And we'll use CSS to actually use the data or the disabled attribute on the button to hide and show these uh, spans accordingly. So instead of 
doing this in a data attribute and trying to put HTML inside of an attribute. Uh, this allows us to write regular old ERB for these. It's a little bit more HTML, but we can add our um, spinners and other SVGs or icons for the processing state. We can add those in easily here. And all of that is gonna be taken care of by CSS for the hiding and showing. So that's super cool. So we can go into our CSS and we can say, well, our button class or our button selector, we want to have the class of show when enabled. And this is going to be a disable or display initial. Show when disabled is going to be display none because the button is enabled in this case. And then we'll have the disabled selector for the button. And we can just flip flop these and say none and initial. And what we'll see now is we can submit this form. It will change the text to processing. Turbo already marked that as disabled. So then the CSS will detect that and update the display there. And we will be able to show that record is now being submitted to the server. So that is a super handy um, feature that's now built in. A little bit of CSS can do all the work for you there. And our form can go, um, oops, form, HTML, ERB. We can have something in here like font awesome icon of FA spin or whatever and that will generate our icon for that so we can have the little spinner if we have font awesome or whatever we might want there. So this is a nice um, improvement there. It's built into Turbo, so we can use that for all of our forms. Um, I'm getting in the habit of basically just using form.button for everything. Works the same for the most part as a form.submit, but it allows HTML inside of it. So it's a lot more useful for situations like this. So that's it for this episode. We're gonna be following up with a lot more examples on how to use Hotwire to build different features. I'm really excited about some of the upcoming episodes. So I will talk to you in the future on more Hotwire stuff. That's it for now. Talk to you soon. Peace.